It is Monday, October 6, 2025. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. Two areas to watch. This one here, this is the strong tropical wave that is going to continue to approach us in the Caribbean. It will be nearby, especially by Friday. I want to highlight this. I want to zoom down to the chances this develops into a tropical storm and hurricane and how close that area can get. And here's another area we're watching now. If you're watching, uh, and I track storms on this channel, especially this time of year, wherever they may go, wherever they may develop start to finish. If you're watching from New England, swinging back toward New York City, uh, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Outer Banks of North Carolina, North Carolina as a whole, there's going to be a coastal storm system that develops here late week, and it could be rather significant. I want to show you that in this video as well. So these two spots in particular, but not losing sight of some of the flooding, we've had the heavy rain, Guatemala now believes we've had some heavier rain, so plenty of areas to cover. So we'll go step by step in this video. And I do appreciate you subscribing, uh, especially this time of year, in case I have to put out an additional video, you'll get those alerts. So in welcome to all the uh, new subscribers. Thank you for taking the time to do that. All right, here we are in the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, Dominica, for example, Antigua, Barbuda, Anguilla. Here's the spot we're watching. The good news is it's not really better organized than what we were seeing yesterday. You see a very healthy, strong tropical wave sitting out there. But let me zoom down a little bit closer. This is a look at the uh, water vapor. It's the mid-levels of the atmosphere. Point being, what I'm looking at here is uh, for some of the dry air in the atmosphere. Here's the tropical wave. You see this orangey shading in here? That's some of the dry air out ahead of it. This is running right into that. It doesn't mean it's not going to develop, but the dry air does help us. It can at least slow up some of the uh, development. So that is some good news. Just know that I'm watching everything, all the science-y stuff behind the scenes. This tropical wave right now is running into this pocket of dry air, which at least temporarily is helping us out. So over the last 24 hours, I haven't seen much more development, which is a good thing. So with that, we are gonna stay in monitor mode. This does include anywhere from really Puerto Rico, the British and U.S. Virgin Islands, all the way through Anguilla, down through St. Lucia and Barbados. Because while I believe this system, uh, whatever it is, will be a little bit closer towards, say, Anguilla, eventually Anagata, or maybe to the north, I do expect some sort of curve out of this. It could bring in some heavier rain, even as we get all the way down through Grenada and Trinidad and Tobago. But monitor mode for some, uh, at least the uh, uh, just a kind of heightened alert for this, Barbados, St. Lucia to the the north, that's where we're kind of really watching out for this thing as a whole. So just kind of spreading the word. We're in a heightened alert state. We're watching this together. You know I've got you uh, covered with this. If we need to go into action mode, we'll go island by island, and I will let you know with advance warning. A few of us may need to go into action mode by the time we get into tomorrow. Now, what is going to happen with this thing? This, in the, again, we'll cover this area in just a few. This area here will continue to work its way toward at least the northeastern Caribbean. Uh, as far as development goes, the uh, American model still showing a hurricane and the European model still showing no storm, although uh, we've seen it at times kind of showing maybe a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm. Canadian model showing a hurricane. The Icon model, German model, has backed off a little bit. It's gone from hurricane to more like a, a tropical storm with this. So a lot of uncertainty, but I showed you one of the reasons why. It's really that pocket of dry air and a little bit of wind shear, that pocket of dry air makes it very difficult to see if this will develop. But either way, we're watching it, and I like that it's way out there because we have time to do so. Now, the water temperatures are very warm, as we know. So as this area gets closer, if it does move into us, it could really develop quickly. That is a concern. Know that I'm watching that. I will let you know uh, tomorrow if some of us need to go into action mode, if not uh, sooner. I'll give you that heads up. But right now, I value your resources. We all have different means. Right now, we are in monitor mode watching this together. Now, you can see the modeling all in good agreement, bringing this very close to the Caribbean. Almost all of the models show some sort of a curve. Some curve it a little bit too late, bringing something through the northeastern Caribbean, some a bit sooner, which would be good news. But most of the models as on this uh, heading do show some substantial rain for some of us, at least in the northeastern Caribbean, if not the whole eastern Caribbean. Now we get a closer look. This map I like because it shows us some of the uncertainty, right? So you're looking at uh, here in these, uh, r this red shading, that would be the uh, European model. The uh, green shading here would be the American model. And again, this isn't really showing the uh, strain, but 
but it shows the uncertainty anywhere from the northeastern Caribbean all the way simply sitting over water. And that's why we are in monitor mode watching this as it does get closer. Now, those squiggly lines, well, what does that mean for how strong this can get? Well, this is 24 hours out. This is uh, 48 hours out. So two days out, three days out, four days out in time. Now, yesterday evening, a lot of the models were having this get really strong, but they backed off just a little bit. I believe that's because of the dry air I've been watching. Most of the models have this becoming at least a tropical storm, some about a category one hurricane. Some really want to strengthen it down the road because a few of the models that do bring it closer to us, well, the water temperatures are warm. So that would make sense that a couple of the models that if they bring it close to us would really strengthen this uh, but most of the models show some consistent strengthening as we go out in time now here's the European model here we are in the Caribbean the European model showing a little more development than yesterday but still nothing super crazy as far as development goes that's a good thing I'm hoping this is the one that kind of wins out so here we are going out in time here this is Wednesday and you could see trying to develop into some sort of maybe uh, tropical depression you have a tropical depression then a tropical storm, then a hurricane. Those are kind of how uh, the uh, the categories are, are, if you will, uh, stack up or the classification. So here we are in the Caribbean. Let's go out in time a little bit more so into the end of the week. And you can see again this area of rain, but not really a lot of development out of this. So the European model still holding on to that, just showing by the time we get into Friday, we'll have a lot of rain sitting over parts of us in the uh, Caribbean, Eastern uh, Caribbean, but not a developed system. And this does make sense in the way that there is a little bit of wind shear that can knock this thing apart and there's that pocket of dry air but it's still a wait and see at this point but again it's out there so we have time to watch it the American model like the Canadian model is really developing uh, this area uh, into a hurricane but it does make a bit more of a curve so as we work our way through the day uh, you can see we'll be watching this and over the next 24 hours like I just did I'll be really seeing how it does with that dry air the American model eventually strengthens it but of no Oh, not as quickly as it did yesterday. So again, kind of trending a bit toward that European model. So this is a Wednesday evening either way approaching us in the uh, Caribbean, developing on Wednesday into a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm by that point. And then by later in the week, it develops it further. By the time we get into Thursday, that's when it really starts to develop it into a tropical storm. But yesterday at this time, I showed you that Thursday outlook. The American model was showing a hurricane. Now it's showing a tropical storm. So it's kind of backed off just a touch. I like that trend. We'll see if it holds. Here are the fronts to the north that will eventually try to grab it, but it does does have it developing into a strong tropical storm by Friday, potentially a hurricane by Friday, but it does also have it making the curve. So even if the American model is right, it has the core staying to the north of us, but it would pull in a lot of uh, moisture for some of our islands. Uh, but again, it would be a miss, and then we'd be watching Bermuda down the road. And if it continues on this heading, there'd be more systems here. This is the big one uh, that will be near the mid-Atlantic and northeast. But you can see, even if it lifts to the uh, north, you can see some of the uh, heavier rain uh, that will be around in spots. And then you see, as we get down the road by the weekend, hopefully making a curve, hopefully missing Bermuda. And and uh, I'll zoom into the uh, northeast of the United States in just a second with that area. But Bermuda, once again, there could be a couple systems nearby as we work our way toward the end of the week, which has been the whole kind of theme of the uh, season. This one, uh, we'll see what happens. This would be by the time we get into uh, Monday. So no doubt a busy pattern. We at least have a very close call in the Caribbean. Here's the zoom down look, and then let me swing up toward that big coastal storm in parts of the eastern United States. Here's the really heavier rain. Uh, Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, Guatemala. We've been dealing with this really for a couple weeks, right? With the uh, the flooding, uh, the mudslides, all of that dangerous weather continues. The rain is just going to persist. Same thing, El Salvador, western Honduras staying very active, Mexico, Belize. Here are some of the scattered areas of rain. Uh, northern Bahamas, better chance of rain than, of course, all eyes on on that that's the, this is the American model that's the tropical wave that will be approaching we'll see which models kind of right but either way uh, we are on higher alert monitor mode this is Wednesday watching this area approach if this model is right we'll see that curve uh, hopefully sooner than later but a close approach Thursday trying to develop into some sort of tropical storm and then by Friday very close to us in the northeastern Caribbean even if it does make a turn uh, hopefully it does 
does, it will draw in some of that additional moisture for uh, some of us as we work our way toward the end of the week. Now let's shift to this coastal storm and then I want to show you Priscilla out there in the eastern Pacific. A lot of action here. I'll cover this in a moment. But what's going on here is it's amazing how the weather's tied together. We've had all that rain uh, back through parts of the Bahamas, southeast U.S. We have a new front that's going to move in, right? Here comes a new front. Here are some of the leftover moisture. Watch what happens. Let's go on time here. This is Wednesday. Some of that rain moving through the Maritimes, watching that Atlantic region of Canada as a whole. Now, as this front passes by, we're of course keeping an eye on this, uh, which could be the next name system out there in the Atlantic. But as this front passes by on Thursday, it's also going to leave additional moisture. So yes, we're watching this uh, system trying to develop down here, but we already have the rain in this sector. And then another front moves in, it leaves even more rain. So it's kind of like doubling up on some of the rain. We have a ton of moisture in this area uh, and with that water temperature is still very warm that adds to some of that and we're going to see a big area of rain develop near the southeast coast of the U.S. by Friday and then kind of lift to the north almost like a nor'easter or some sort of hybrid system maybe not truly tropical in nature but watch how this evolves and develops near the outer banks of North Carolina. A huge blob of rain in this some stronger winds. This is going to be a significant uh, system. Almost all of the models are showing this while we're watching this, not losing sight of this. And of course, Bermuda uh, uh, apparently sitting right in between once again. But look how this system kind of works its way back up toward uh, parts of New England, watching over toward the mid-Atlantic, anywhere from New York City back through New Jersey. Center maybe here. Strong winds would be a potential. We'll see how this evolves throughout the week. There's going to be some changes. But giving you the heads up, anywhere from the Atlantic region of Canada south back through the Carolinas, watching this closely in particular, particular Cape Cod uh, back through, uh, say, uh, the Washington, D.C. area. There could be some substantial impacts as this kind of pivots its way in. So we'll be monitoring that very closely. Could be a big windmaker as well. And the models are picking up on this, this area of low pressure by the end of the week developing. And uh, they're making it rather significant, some tropical storm-like or even some hurricane gusts, hopefully over water. But this looks to be a significant system. So again, anywhere from Cape Cod through the Outer Banks of North Carolina, including New York City, uh, New York City, Philadelphia, working back toward Washington, D.C., giving you the heads up, there could be a rather significant system building late week into the weekend that we'll be tracking as well in monitoring that. So the next name on the list is Jerry, whatever that is. It looks like it, it may be that area that we're watching in the Atlantic. We'll see how it does with the dry air. Then Karen after that, Lorenzo, and then Melissa. Meanwhile, the Eastern Pacific is very active. Uh, you can see here, here's Octave falling apart. Here's Priscilla. Here's a new area we're watching enhancing that rain. Guatemala and El Salvador in enhanced rain again mudslides a high potential. I was highlighting the southern coast of uh, Mexico, and once again, more of that rain will be moving in. Southern coast of Mexico, additional rain. This new area will lift to the north, and this new area, uh, regardless of how it develops into a tropical storm, hurricane, or just kind of a weaker system, looks to lift up uh, toward the Baja, right into the uh, Gulf here, and swing its way up. This may bring down the road additional rain, uh, potentially early next week. Uh, northern Mexico, Texas, watching Arizona, watching New Mexico. This may kind of work its way back through the Baja. We'll watch that. This is the first area. <clears throat> Should be some weakening as it gets closer to the Baja, but the second area back behind it. So again, anywhere from the southern coast of Mexico back through Guatemala and El Salvador, more rain with the activity there. Now the swells from Umberto and Amelda, all the action out in the Atlantic, still significant. We've seen some damage along our north facing coastlines in many spots. And then as we work our way to the end of the week, regardless of development, the seas are really going to be picking up dangerous Atlantic passageways coming out of the Eastern Caribbean as we work our way through the end of the week. Uh, so we'll see how much this area develops. But once again, the Atlantic, very, very rocky. And then this new coastal storm will develop and swing its way closer to uh, New York City as we work our way down the road. Now, as far as rain goes, northern Bahamas will still have some totals, over 100 millimeters of some rain, some additional rain around, scattered about Cuba, Jamaica, Cayman Islands, Haiti and the Dominican Republic, some downpours again, right? That could give us a quick 
like 100 millimeters of rain. Watching out for those rivers scattered about Puerto Rico, U.S., British Virgin Islands. All eyes in Guilla, St. Martin, St. Bart's will be on what's going on out there in the Atlantic, how strong it gets, how close it gets. I got you covered here. I'll be watching it for you. Scattered areas of rain, Dominica, Martinique, Barbados, St. Lucia. Even St. Vincent, the Grenadines, and Grenada, where we've been dry, rain chance starts to bump up some. Trinidad and Tobago, watching out for some spotty areas of rain and storms. Rain chance a little higher. Guyana and uh, Suriname, uh, central sections and southern sections of Venezuela, better chance of rain. Same thing in Colombia, kind of hit or miss ABC Islands. But here's the heavier rain. Look at Guatemala. We could have some spots, upwards of 20 centimeters or 8 inches of some rain just with all this tropical action. Watching the uh, southern coast of Mexico here. Look Look at Belize swinging back toward the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. We'll have some spots of 100 millimeters of rain or four inches of rain or higher uh, for three day rain total. So uh, Belize, we could have four or five inches of rain in some spots. Keeping an eye on this moisture from Mexico, especially southern Mexico, but we'll see how this eventually evolves and swings up. And then again, watching the Bahamas, but all eyes will be here on what's going to try to develop near the coast of the uh, Carolinas through the uh, rest of the Mid Atlantic and New England. Going Going forward throughout the week. So Jamaica, we're active. Some of us dry, some of us getting the scattered showers and storms, a 50 to 60% chance. Cayman Islands, 30% chance today. We have a 40% chance for tomorrow. Gradually bumping up some tomorrow, Wednesday, up to about a 40% chance in Trinidad and Tobago. Barbados, 30% chance for today and a 40% chance for tomorrow. Isolated in St. Lucia, but the rain chance will be going up as the week goes on. Same thing in Grenada, where we have been very dry by Wednesday. Rain chance will bump up some. We'll be looking at about a 40% chance. And you see that as well on Wednesday. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the rain chance will be up to about 50%. We do that again as we work our way into Martinique, swing to the north and Dominica. Isolated today, better chance as the uh, week goes on. 30% chance today in Guadeloupe and a 40% chance for tomorrow. Antigua, Barbuda, all eyes on what's going on in the Atlantic. 30 to 40% chance of some passing showers. And St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat, a little bit higher today, about a 50% chance of some spotty showers. We do that again. And Guilla and St. Bart's, we swing back towards St. Martin, St. Benstatia, holding on to about a 40% chance over the next uh, couple of days. Puerto Rico, scattered areas of rain and thunderstorms, a 50% chance. A 50% chance today, U.S. and British Virgin Islands. We're watching carefully and closely what's going on out there in the Atlantic Bahamas, northern Bahamas. That's where that rain chance is even higher. Higher. As we work our way through the Turks and Caicos, about a 40 to 50% chance over the next three days. 40 to 50% chance in the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Some of this will be heavy. The mudslide potential, the dangerous rivers. We swing back toward Belize. Look how our rain chance is higher as expected. We're up to a good 70% chance today. Flooding will be a possibility. Keep me posted in the comments if you're in Belize. Rain chance, Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire, still kind of minimal, running at about a 20 percent chance through at least midweek. 40 to 50 percent chance in Guyana, a little bit higher in Suriname, 32 up to a 40 percent chance by the time we get into Wednesday. Scattered areas of rain and storms as we swing back toward Cuba. Costa Rica and Panama, one of the spots there's been a lot of moisture around monitoring those areas of flooding. We swing back toward Nicaragua, very active, a 70 percent chance a 60% chance in Honduras, some pockets of flooding, and we get back toward Guatemala and El Salvador. As I mentioned, still significant flooding possible in the active pattern. There's really no end in sight to that yet. So giving you that heads up, it continues to roll on. Mexico City, 60 to 70% chance, and we swing back toward the Yucatan Peninsula. There's gonna be some heavy areas of rain, uh, Cancun, Cozumel in particular, but even Merida and Campeche on the flip side, we could see some areas of rain and storms. Northern Colombia, 50 to 60, percent chance of 50 to 60 percent chance in northern Venezuela and of course in Bermuda. The main thing is watching all the stuff going on in the Atlantic as we go through the week ahead. So we are in monitor mode uh, in uh, the parts of the Caribbean. We may go into action mode tomorrow and at least a few of our islands. So again, stay tuned for that. That's what we'll be watching. We may need to just to be on the safe side, take action in a few of our islands, watching the track to see how it, it curves, how closely all of this gets. And along the east coast of the U.S., that bigger and more significant a coastal storm that will develop. I know it's not getting a lot of attention now, but I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it developing. I'll be tracking that as well. Hurricane season goes through the end of November. We need this thing to end, but it still rolls on. So thank you for being part of this channel. Have a good start to the week.